Following a ferocious snowstorm in February 1978, five friends vanished from Oroville in California. Their abandoned car was found on a mountain road. However, there was no sign of the young men. Tragedy cast a dark shadow over them, and to this day, this case continues to intrigue and horrify. Tonight on Dark Curiosities, Beyond the Snowstorm, the deaths of Jack Madruga, Jackie Hewitt, Theodore Weyer, William Sterling, and the vanishing of Gary Matthews. There was a chill in the air, a winter moon hanging in the clear night sky. It was approximately 10 p.m. on the 24th of February 1978, where close friends Jack Madruga, Jackie Hewitt, Theodore Weyer, William Sterling and Gary Matthias departed from a basketball game, taking place at California State University in Chico. The quintet had travelled 50 miles from their homes in Oroville. The men were between the ages of 24 and 32, with Hewitt being the youngest and Weyer the oldest. Three of them were diagnosed as being mentally handicapped. However, Matthias was receiving treatment for schizophrenia following a drug problem in the army. And Madruga, although undiagnosed, was apparently, according to his mother, slow. Madruga's condition had apparently been under control for about two years and was the designated driver of the car, a white 1969 Mercury Montego. Once the game concluded, they drove to the nearby Bears Market, where they purchased some food and drinks. They carried on their trip heading south, which was the last time they would be seen alive. Imogen Wire, the mother of Theodore, awoke at dawn the next morning, a feeling of foreboding washing over her. Instinct told her to check on her son, and she found that Ted's bed had not been slept in. Panicked, she swiftly called William's mother, Juanita, who told Wire that she had been awake since 2am, worried sick about Bill, who had also failed to return home. Other phone calls were made to the families of Madruga, Matthias and Hewitt. Hours passed and there was no contact from any of the five. It was Mrs Madruga who alerted the police. It was Tuesday the 28th of February and police finally had a breakthrough in the investigation. There had been a vicious snowstorm in the area and the snow itself was between four and six feet deep. On a deserted rocky mountain near a dense forest, authorities discovered the Mercury Montego. The vehicle had been abandoned, lying 70 miles from Chico, sitting at the snow line and the tires had spun. However, the car was not stuck so it was entirely possible that the men could have easily pushed it free. What was even more strange was that the gas tank was a quarter full and the mercury was completely operable. Maps were recovered from the glove compartment, one of which was of California, and wrappers from the snacks they bought littered the seats. Strangely, the vehicle appeared to be undamaged. Despite the fact they had travelled over perilously rocky terrain, there was no evidence of scratching, dents or stains anywhere on the car, which made police believe that the driver either drove at an incredibly slow speed, taking care over the road, or he knew the area well enough to be able to manoeuvre the Mercury without any problems, the latter believed by police as being extremely unlikely. Aside from the missing men, the car keys had also vanished, yet police managed to hotwire the engine into starting. From various accounts of the day they went missing, it appeared that none of the passengers were wearing appropriate clothing for the bitter winter temperatures, and it was known that Madruga disliked both camping and cold weather. They were all known as being very much stay-at-home people. Only Matthias occasionally stayed out overnight with friends. The reason as to why they followed the mountainous path remains unknown. No progress was made for many months, and it wasn't until the conclusion of the spring thaw when on June 4th a group of motorcyclists made a grisly discovery. They had wandered into a deserted Forest Service trailer camp when they were suddenly overwhelmed by a putrid smell. Upon entering one of the neglected trailers, authorities found the decaying body of Ted Wire, who was lying on a bed wrapped in eight sheets, and it was also noted that his shoes were missing. 
On the bedside table was Ted's nickel ring, which bore his name, his gold necklace, his wallet, and a gold Waltham watch, which was missing a crystal. The family said that the watch did not belong to any of the missing men. A window of the trailer had been broken, indicating that Ted had gained entrance this way. At the time of his disappearance, Ted had been tall and heavy set. He was 5 foot 11 and weighed roughly 200 pounds. When his body was discovered, another shocking element was brought to light. When Ted passed away, he had lost between 80 and 100 pounds, about seven stones in weight. His feet had been severely frostbitten, and he had also grown a beard, which suggested to police that he had been alive and slowly deteriorating from starvation and exposure in the trailer between a time frame of 8 to 13 weeks. He was located 19 and a half miles from where the car was found. What was even more odd was that there were matches, books and wooden furniture in the trailer which could have been used to create a fire and a storage shed nearby also had been opened and some rations had been used. Further within the shed was a locker containing dehydrated Mexican food and other meals along with fruit cocktails which all would have been enough to feed every one of the five men for a year. A propane tank was also in another shed, which, if it had been found, would have provided an appropriate source of gas and heat to the trailer. A 55-year-old man named Joseph Shonez provided police with a statement, suggesting that he had possibly seen the men. At 5.30pm on the night they disappeared, he drove his Volkswagen Bug up the same road. His car got stuck in the snow, only 50 yards from where the white mercury would be found. Trying to escape from his vehicle, Joseph suffered a mild heart attack. The engine was still running and the heater was also on. Waking, he heard what he described as whistling noises a little further down the road. He managed to exit his car and he saw a group of men and a woman holding a baby. They were all walking in the glare of the headlights and Joseph heard them talking. He called out for help when suddenly the headlights went out and the chatting ceased. He returned to the bug and lay down. A couple of hours later, once again, lights glared through the front window. For the second time, he yelled for help, and the light beams dimmed to darkness. Joseph's car ran out of fuel, and he managed to walk eight miles to a lodge called Mountain House, where he fortunately received help. He had a drink and headed back up the road, only to now find the unoccupied White Montego. The day after Ted Wire's body was found, the remains of Bill Sterling and Jack Madruga were discovered. Police believed the pair never made it to the trailer, although it has been suggested that perhaps they went to the trailer for a time, however at some point they departed. Bill and Jack were found on the road opposite to the trailer, 11 and a half miles from the car. Jack had been partially consumed by forest animals and had been dragged 10 feet to a stream. Madruga lay face up and his hand was curled over his watch on his wrist. All that was left of Sterling was bones, scattered over 50 feet of wilderness. Two days later, Jackie Hewitt's father, who was involved in the recovery effort, discovered his son's backbone. Hewitt's jeans and shoes were also recovered. An assistant sheriff from Plumas County found Hewitt's skull the next day, 100 yards downhill from where the rest of the remains were found, northeast of the trailer. The dentist of the Hewitt family confirmed that the remains belonged to Jackie. Authorities also found forest service blankets and a flashlight northwest of the trailer, however it is unknown how long they had been there for. In a twist, the final of the five, Gary Matthias, was never found. His shoes were found in the trailer with Wire's body, and it is believed that Matthias swapped his shoes for the larger sized pair belonging to Ted due to frostbite, which would have made his feet swell up. When Gary left on that fateful night of February 24th, he took no identification and did not take his wallet with him. He was of a slender build and had dark hair. He was also cross-eyed without his glasses. 
When he vanished, he also did not take any of his medication with him, so it is possible that without the stelazine and cogentin, he would lapse into what was described as a disoriented psychosis. Many questions remain regarding the deaths of William Sterling, Jackie Hewitt, Theodore Wire and Jack Madruga, and even more speculation and theories regarding the fate of Gary Matthias. Why did they deviate from their presumably planned route home? Why did they walk in sub-zero temperatures to a disused trailer when the car was perfectly operable? What made them abandon the car in the first place? Were they the silhouettes that Joseph saw in the headlights? Where is Gary Matthias and is he alive? This case seems to have so many questions and very few answers. The families will more than likely never know the reasons why these events occurred and what happened on that fateful February night. But there is always hope that one day the truth will materialise and they will be given closure. Five friends lost in a snowstorm, yet forever bound by their eternal friendship.